of God that lives within each of us. And now if you'll please speak with me, the the opening statement, we'll repeat that together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. Now let's take that within as we become silent this morning. And now please affirm it with me once more. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, on emptiness. And so it is. Our songs this morning will be led by Nancy Lynn and accompanied by Jeff. Thank you, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to rise if you're able? And we'll start with Surely the Presence. Is love. 
Thank you, Nancy, Lynn, and Jeff. That was gorgeous. Yay. Y'all sound good. <laughs> oh, I see a witch in the back seat. Ooh. <laughs> it's almost Halloween. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Canal Valley. It is so nice to see everyone this morning. And do we have any first-time visitors today? Yes. Hi, Crystal. Crystal is from Southern California, and she's been here for a couple of months. And Danny, would you like to introduce your daughter? This is my daughter, Nicole. She's here from Omaha for a week visit. Woohoo! Okay. Welcome to you both. introduced her again. <laughs> okay, our announcements this uh, week. After church on Sundays, we do have the Zoomers, and if you'd like to join the after party, you can dial in using the link on your bulletin. The book study group is Thursday at 8 p.m., and this time they're studying Unity, A Quest for Truth, a classic by Eric Butterworth. And her listening class has been canceled for the month. Thank you, Mary Ann. You'll come up with that later, I'm sure. You'll let us know when it is. And the Healing Sound Bath is Friday, October 25th. Nancy Lynn puts that on. She has amazing crystals that she brings with her. And you just you bring your little mat, lounge chair, whatever, and you just zone out for an hour. And she plays like angelic music. Really, it's, it's, it's awesome, so come out. You have to let her know, though, if you want to come out, if you want to come, because space is limited, but we'll fit you in. Okay, all right, okay. Ignore the please RSVP. <laughs> Next Sunday is a big deal, right? Yeah. yeah. Woo -hoo. Our annual meeting and potluck after church. So you know, if you're a member, that you have to renew your form, and you just need to sign a little thing on the on the uh, on your pew, and turn it in. You can put it in the offering plate, and that will renew you. Yeah, Sally is our fantastic model today, and uh, that will renew you for and make you able to vote in the annual membership meeting. So please tan, uh, plan to attend because there will be important business. We have new board members coming on, old board members going off, and we do have to elect those. So there will also be a potluck luncheon after the meeting. And next Sunday is also boo-hoo. 
a sad day. <laughs> yeah, it's your pastor, so. I oh, know. Yeah. Yeah, breaks my heart. Um, okay. Otherwise, woohoo, looky here. Friday fun night coming up November 1st. If you had a good time last time, we're doing bingo again. <laughs> Carol and her husband Wayne. Thank you, Carol. Right? Amy's gonna. Amy's gonna be the hostess. But is Wayne gonna spin? Oh, good. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. I, I'll just give you a little hint there. Carol was real busy last month with doing something. Not, not any pot holders this time. <laughs> so don't come for pot holders. Just come because you want to have fun. Amy, you're going to be the hostess with the mostess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, great. So that's um, please RSVP by October 30th or text Amy. And the number, if you all have this, do you have this? Okay, when Pam comes back, she's our wagon that the wheels are going to fall off soon and we're all going to be lost. So <laughs> anyway, I'll turn it over to our illustrious leader. All right. Dr. Reverend Scott Kirshner. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Woo! I, need, I need to step up on, there we go. To step into that. Good morning, greetings. Welcome, namaste, bienvenido, shalom, assalamu alaikum, namaste, aloha, buongiorno, kalametta. And I don't think I, what, what was the Maori one from New Zealand? I forget what it is. The light in me greets the light in you. My name is Sky Kirshner. Thank you for letting me be your pastor for one more week your storyteller, your guide, and your friend. I want to welcome you to Unity of Kanawha Valley Live and also online. Thank you for being with us from wherever you are. Now, people have been coming up to me with little pots full of money, and <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, but Danny's here. Danny, what, are, what do you want them to do with these pots full of quarters? Is that due today? I don't think for quarters, but uh, Barbie needs something to do. Oh, so you're going to kick it over to Barbie, okay. Yeah. Barbie? Sure. sure. The treasurer will take all money. Okay. <laughs> it, it's a change fundraiser that Danny announced last week. And so any spare change that you've got, if you've got those little trick-or-treat buckets, just bring it in and we'll count it. That's so awesome. the coffers. So give them to Barbara. A, a, a baggie? And if you want to roll the <laughs> Okay, so if the collection plate gets too busy, just bring them to Barbie afterwards. I'm good. Something to do. Has a hard time walking and can't run around the track much right now. Keep her out of the truck. So. And that gives Danny an opportunity to get out of the house. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Well, I uh, would like to encourage you to continue to lift up our board, our prayer chaplains, our nominating committee, as we continue to plan for the ministry of the church. And for those people in our community who are stepping forward to help me with the interim ministry team, and in that spirit, I'd like for us to go to the prayer for the church, which is in the front page of your, uh, can you give me a little bit more bass? I want to sound profound here. Uh, and uh, I just want to notice something. The very last line of this prayer uh, has the word capital He. Uh, in it, I think that's a reference to Jesus Christ. 
but it could also be a reference to any stranger, including the least of these, because everyone deserves a capital letter when it comes to you. And uh, so I want to encourage you, feel free to say he or feel free to say she, right? Uh, because this could also be referring to you when you're having a hard day. All right, so when we get there, uh, don't feel bound by the word he. Could you join me in the blessing for the church? This is God's arms. May we who come here not only find out about God, but find God. May there be beauty in this place, but especially May this be a place of worship. May this be a place of instruction. May this be a place of singing. May this be a place of prayer. But for us who worship and take instruction and sing and pray, may this always be a place of inner stillness where we may listen and hear what God sees. May whoever ministers here minister in love. May whoever teaches here teach truth. May whoever serves here serve pleasantly. May everyone come into this house in expectation and go with thanksgiving. And may anyone who comes needing help go feeling blessed. May this be such a house that Jesus Christ, or any stranger, even one of the least, would feel in it that he or she was with friends. Um, thank you for that. Now we've got a buzz. That's so it goes. Uh, so there will be an after party on Zoom. Uh, I've got my laptop with me, so I'll set that up in the, uh, in the uh, Sunday school room if you'd like to join in that conversation. They always have a lively conversation there. Well, Unity of Kanawha Valley is a special place. We come together to celebrate love and spiritual wisdom in its many forms. Many of us are committed to practicing the spirituality of Jesus, the Jewish mystic who taught with his words and his actions a universal love for everyone and everything. Unity promotes the idea that the light of God, the spirit of love is within you and that by practicing going within and resting within, you don't have to do anything when you get there, just hang out inside yourself you can discover this love. And when you find this love, this love finds you, you become a fuller expression out into the world of love. You don't need to do or say anything special to earn this love or be worthy of it. It's already inside you, it's been there all along. You don't have to be born again to find this love. You were born fine the first time. This love is the source at all of all life and all love and everything there is in the universe. If you came here today to learn some practices or ideas around love, you're probably in the right place. We have a cafeteria philosophy, take what you like, take what helps you to be more loving and leave the rest. If something today seems strange or unusual, I'd like to invite you to try it, put it to the test, and see what your own experience is. Today, we will be exploring the idea of what is it that Unity folks believe? What do Unity folks believe? And more importantly, maybe what do you believe as you come here to Unity? Affirmative prayer is a central part of what we do, so let's do that right now. Would you soften your gaze? Let a smile come to your face and notice how it feels when you simply let yourself smile. And would you say to yourself, 
I feel the presence of life and love within me. I breathe in love and I release any thoughts of separation or disconnection. I feel the presence of life and love within me. I breathe in love and I release any thoughts of disconnection. And if you would imagine you are standing in front of someone, someone you love, someone you know who has loved you. You might be separated by distance. You might be separated by time. You might be separated by the veil of life and death. Look that loving person in the eye and say to that person, thank you for loving me today. Thank you for loving me today. And if you would give yourself a nice big yawn and a nice big stretch and take in, would you come up here to help me? Nice big yawn and a nice big stretch. And would you stand up please and would you balance with taking an eye on one foot? We don't want anybody falling today. If you're able to stand with one foot, you got the pew in front of you, so feel free to grab it if you need to. And let's go to the other foot. We're practicing balance. Taking, you're doing awesome today. Oh, you got your, yeah. All right, all right, we're doing good. And uh, find someone who you haven't met yet. Find with someone who's sitting alone, even if you don't know them, and say to that person, thank you for being here today. Thank you for loving me today. Okay, thank you. I want to thank the universe, God, the source of all life and love for another day on this amazing journey. And I want to thank everyone who's made this service possible for Jeff and Nancy Lynn. I was going with Mary Lynn, but Mary Lynn, our hardworking heroes of heavenly harmony and humor for Peggy, our persistent pronouncer of pleasing proclamations, for our board members, Phil Herndon, Barbie Dahlman, Mary Beth Feller, David Getman, Laura Wellstead, Kate Flack, raise your hand if you're one of our board members, please, and Stephen Keith, for 
our nominating chairperson, Sally Snyder, who's got another week to go. For everyone called to our interim ministry team, for Ernie Kessel and uh, Rich, Chris, Danny, Amy, our zeroed in Zohans of the Zoom Zone. By the way, I said to uh, I said to um, Chris uh, during the uh, during the passing of the love. Are you getting that buzz? And he said, No, but if you have any more, please share it with me. <laughs> so. I, that one kind of went right over my head, but uh, it's referring to the speakers. Jeff, I was referring to the speakers over here. For our daily word reader, Sharon Mullins. I think Sharon, no, yes? Are you reading the daily word today? Yes. Okay, fantastic, good. And for our junior bell ringer, Tegan. Thank you for ringing our bell. It's always good to have somebody in your life who knows how to ring your bell. Let's hear it for Tegan. Come up and get a double fist bump from me, Tegan. Thank you. So let's spend some time in uh, some extended silence. I've been getting a little dizzy during this time, so I'm going to have the chair here just in case. Uh, I've got low blood pressure. I'm wearing my... <laughs> my socks today and I hydrated David was asking me what might be going on I said well you know that's probably what it is but maybe I'm just anxious about how sad I'm feeling so that could be it too so uh, but uh, let's join together in, uh, in our uh, appreciation of this moment So we might notice the sounds in the room as we shuffle and get adjusted, find ourselves in a comfortable place. You might notice the experience of sitting the experience of having your feet on the floor the way the floor is holding all of us up so perfectly right now all the weight, all the burdens that we come up with, that we come in with, are perfectly supported by the floor and the building right now. And the building is being supported by the foundation. And the foundation is being supported by the bedrock of this ancient Appalachian. Topography. And all of that is conspiring together to give us perfect support right now in this moment. You might notice your breathing the circulation of breath, the taking in, the exchange that happens in our lungs, the letting go, and the resting. All of life fits this metaphor of the breath, the receiving, the transforming, the letting go, and the resting. And 
And so as we settle into this moment, we remember the teaching of Jesus, the Jewish mystic. who said to his followers, seek ye the kingdom. The kingdom is among you. It is in your midst. It is at hand. And most importantly, it is within. And so we go inside, curious about the meaning of this teaching, curious about how there might be anything within us that could be even close to this thing he called the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. this expansive realm within us that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. We know one of the qualities of this kingdom is the quality of prosperity abundance and sufficiency, the sense that there is more than enough, that we are more than enough, that we have more than enough, and that by sharing and putting into circulation ourselves, our hearts, our love, we receive so much more. This kingdom within has the quality of healing, both of cure for what ails us physically, as well as healing for what troubles us emotionally and mentally. We celebrate healing in all forms including the healing that comes from acceptance of what is. We know this kingdom to be a kingdom of relationship, a relation and a kingdom of friendship and love of appreciation, of respect, of enjoyment of each other, both in our unity and in our differences. And the kingdom also has the quality of repair after hurt, forgiveness, reconciliation. And so we practice forgiving everyone, everything. And this kingdom has the quality of guidance, where the still small voice still speaks where we recognize that the signs are all around us. And we practice having the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And it's from this place that we reach out to anyone, anywhere, in any need or trouble. 
those who are running for their lives, those who are hiding for their lives, those who are trapped, <clears throat> unable to move, unable to get away. Those who are living in fear, those who are living in pain, including people right here. Those struggling with anxiety about the future or guilt about the past. Those struggling with addiction, depression, anxiety, physical pain, physical ailments of any sort. We know that as a child of God, you did not inherit sickness. And so we reach out in our mind's eye to anyone, anywhere who's struggling right now. We know the presence of God is spread out equally through this earth and through this entire universe. And that the awareness of the presence of God is possible for every person in any situation, in every situation, with no exceptions. And for this, we are very grateful. Today's daily word is loving. The boundless love of God expresses through me. I am loving. To be loving means to be kind, understanding, and generous. It means forgiving grievances easily and seeking to understand myself and others. In striving to be loving toward others, I begin with myself. Exercising self-compassion when I make a mistake makes forgiving others easier. Taking time for self-care makes it more natural for me to be a nurturing presence for others. Treating myself well helps make my generosity spontaneous and frequent. Love is the very nature of God. I am a spiritual being, which means love is my nature too. Through my loving nature, I am positive optimistic, hopeful, faith-filled. I am the heart and hands of God on earth. I am loving. And from 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. It hears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Well, I just feel so <clears throat> honored 
um, to have, have had Ron ask if I would cover for him today. And I send Ron love wherever he is. And also, this is a good opportunity to, to see and find out if the Zoomers can actually hear my voice before I start. Because they've heard only the piano at times. So now I'd like them to hear the words. This is a, a song written by a beloved, um, one of our beloved Unity modern uh, songwriters. Called, her name is Faith Rivera. And this song is called God Is. And I think this is my favorite of all.
Well, thank you so much, Nancy Lynn. That was beautiful. Uh, Tegan, want to come up and talk with me for a few minutes? I've got some questions for you. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, we have not talked about this, but uh, oh. let me get, uh, get this back on. I'm still Sky. I'm Tegan. I'm going to turn this one off here. Tegan, do you know a singer by the name of Taylor Swift? Yes. Do you know some of her songs? Yes. Do you have a favorite song? Mm, no, but I like a lot of them. Yeah, tell me one of the songs that you know. What, that's the one you don't like. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? What don't you like about that song? I don't know. I just don't like the tune that it's set in. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. To, to, so any other ones? Uh, we need some help here, it sounds like. What's that one about, um, see, I keep thinking about Shake It Off. <laughs> Can, don't think about the pink elephant. What do you like about her music? I don't know. You don't know? I like it. Do you like her videos? I don't watch them. You don't watch her videos. OK. Well, this isn't going anywhere, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. And it's so nice to have you up here. Do you have a favorite art? Do you like to sing or dance or do art or write or something like that? No. Just like hanging out. Do you like to hang out? Yeah, this is going worse and worse. It's so, it's so good to see you today. Let's just, let's just go for a card and we'll... Oh, that's a good one. What's the card say? Let my inner light shine. Yes, and you can let your inner light shine however you want. Okay, now I'll put this back on. Let's, uh, let's close our eyes and take a nice breath. Tell me how long you can hear this. Still hear it? Mother, Father, God, we give thanks for this child and for the child in each and every one of us. Amen. Let's hear for Tegan. Let's hear for parents. <laughs> grandparents, great-grandparents, wherever they are. So, some of us know so He's talking about buzzing, turn, getting turned on, I don't know, Chris. <laughs> Well, uh, this is my favorite time of year in West Virginia because I get to share my favorite West Virginia election time story. <laughs> Clem and Willard were in the graveyard one night collecting names to be registered in the voters room. <laughs> And they're going down with the flashlight, and Clem is shining the flashlight and reading the name. And Willard's job is to write the name down uh, for the registration. And the first name is uh, John Smith. And Clem says, John Smith. And Willard says, all right, John Smith. And then they go along, and uh, Clem says, uh, Judy Brown. And Willard says, all right. Judy Brown. And then they get to the third one, and Clem says, uh, uh, Ezekiel Eichelberger. <laughs> and Willard says, that one's too hard. Let's go on to the next one. And Clem says, now, Willard, 
this person has just as much right to vote as anybody else. <laughs> Put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. This is my heart. Through it, I am connected to my neighbor, to my source, and to my God. I am learning to trust it in all things. And I am grateful. Well, I had a different idea for today's message, but uh, a couple days ago I got this book uh, by Mark Hicks. Mark Hicks is the uh, author or the originator of Truth Unity. Truth Unity is the group that put out the metaphysical, what, what's it? The the Fillmore Study Bible, the huge Bible that sometimes we've had up here with all the annotations from Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. Uh, I wouldn't have bought it in book form. I'm a Kindle guy, but it's not out in Kindle. So uh, I started to read this, and I wanted to share some of the ideas from it. He has a very interesting perspective on unity and on where unity fits in the whole trajectory of the Christian movement. In his idea, he sees Christianity as having three phases or three eras. I was dictating this, and uh, when I, into my uh, uh, book, I don't write it out, I dictate it, and uh, it thought I said errors. Um, <laughs> there are plenty of errors as well, but no, I, I meant eras three phases over time. Uh, the first one he identifies as the Catholic era, the Catholic fa uh, phase of the Christian uh, tradition or the Christian movement, particularly uh, led by the Roman Empire when, uh, when Christianity and whatever that was, when, uh, oh, now I'm forgetting which, which Caesar it was, uh, was losing a war, and he was desperate to win the war, so he was throwing out prayers to every different god he could, and somebody said, well, have you tried the god of Jesus? And he says, no. So they pray to win the war. They do win the war, and Julius Caesar, I guess it's Julius Caesar, says, everybody's good. Who is it? Constantine. Was it Constantine? Okay, thank you. Constantine says, okay, that's it. We're all becoming Christian, because we need to win these wars. And that's the beginning of the Holy Roman Empire. The second phase of uh, Christianity is the, and, and by the way, that's where we get a lot of our feudalistic ideas about doctrine and you know what's going on, seeing God as Lord. Uh, these are medieval ideas, but they're also, you know, you, you've got this hierarchy in the Roman Empire. You've got Caesar at the top, and uh, all of these different political metaphors get transformed into theological thinking during that Roman Empire phase of the Christian tradition. And then uh, Mark Hicks suggests that, uh, that we come to what he calls the evangelical phase, which was led by the rapid burst of knowledge uh, as we came out of the Middle Ages into the Enlightenment, uh, science, and um, uh, all of that and uh, this idea of uh, belief and, uh, you know, what do you believe about the world uh, and saying what you believe about the world becomes very important. And Hicks suggests that we are coming out of that phase and we're starting to enter a new phase. By we, I mean the Christian movement is starting to enter a new phase, which he's calling the metaphysical phase. And that we are just in the beginning of this phase and a transition away from the evangelical phase into the medical physical phase. You can hear that in how I do the welcome today when I say, you know, you don't have to be born again. You were born fine the first time. I am putting into words the idea that, you know, this isn't an evangelical church. This isn't the ev evangelical movement. We're, we're not here to convert people. We're here to evoke people. 
We're here to help you to find within yourself something that's good and has been there all along. And, uh, and so um, Hicks is calling this the metaphysical phase, which he sees the film wars as being in a tradition of folks uh, kind of ushering in this new era, this new epoch or phase of the Christian movement. The rise of people who see themselves as spiritual but not religious, that's me, uh, partially exemplifies this phase. There hasn't been a time in the history of Christianity when people embraced that idea the way they're embracing it now. He notes the progression of new thought, which is uh, the, the film wars, that unity was a new thought church, meaning we're going to think about Christian Christianity, we're going to think about the teachings of Jesus differently. The progression from new thought into new age is part of this. And he, uh, he cites Barnes and Nobles, and I, I think this is, a, this is a neat thing. If you go into a bookstore anywhere, uh, you might notice that there's a Christian book section and there's a New Age section, right? And they're usually not next to each other, right? And he says, well, this is because of marketing, because the metaphysical Christians don't relate to the evangelical Bible, or you know, half those books are Bibles, different versions of the Bibles, or different gift versions, and then all sorts of other books. But it's actually, in his mind, these are, it's, the, it's, the, it's this movement from an evangelical section of the bookstore or the library to this new thought, new age section. Now, in his research, he says the ratio of Christian books to New Age books is, usually, is about five to three. I have a feeling it depends on where you are in the country. For every five Christian books, there's three New Age books. But there's still a lot of New Age books, right? It's not like this is a small part of the library. When I would go to, what was it, Books a Million? That's where I would hang out, right? That was my section of the store. Uh, and he says something I think is really important, even though the sections are kept separate. The book buyer is probably searching for the same thing. Does that make sense? The book buyer who's searching for a book in whichever section you're in is searching. There's a need, there's a desire, there's a longing for something that gives us meaning for something that helps us to explain what's going on, that helps us to become more loving. The metaphysical phase, uh, Hicks notes, uh, is a mystical part of Christianity. It is the desire, as we sang in the hymn today, the desire to be one with God. This is, uh, this is not an evangelical thing, right? The desire is to be loved by God and to be faithful and to, you know, this God up on a throne. But here we're celebrating the idea of finding uh, God within. This mystical part of the tradition is found in every uh, religious tradition, and particularly among the people of the book, that is Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. The strain is there in all three. In Judaism, it's the Kabbalah strain, which is the mystical strain of Judaism. In Islam, it's the Sufi strain, which is the mystical uh, part of Islam. The idea that through prayer, by going within, you will find the presence of God within you. And that's basically all you have to do, right? That's the whole ball of wax right there. And in Christianity, this metaphysical, mystical arm of the church, which has been there all along, is exemplified in the last 120 years by Myrtle and Charles Fillmore and a number of other authors. What Myrtle and Charles at the time called practical Christianity. 
So Hicks in this book, uh, in the first chapter, outlines three foundational beliefs that he sees as uh, foundational to what it means to uh, have a, mis uh, a metaphysical Christianity or to be a metaphysical Christian. And I thought I'd lay this out for you here today. The first one is that we are not born into sin. That would be the evangelical idea. That we are born into relationship. In fact, all mammals, mammals are born into relationship. Reptiles, when you're born, your mother is, you know, if I'm a baby turtle, my mother's a thousand miles away, and uh, I don't need my mother to survive. All I need to do is get myself as quickly as possible into the ocean and hope nobody eats me. If I run into my mother, she might eat me, which is, you know, when I was eight years old, we had an aquarium, and we had guppies, and the guppy mother had all these baby, these little baby guppies, and my mother got this little plastic tank thing to put the baby guppies in the plastic tank. And I asked her, why was that? And she said, because the mother guppy might eat the babies. <laughs> that night, I put every piece of furniture I had in front of the front, in front of my bedroom door, because the thought had never occurred to me that a mother might eat their child. In the mammal world, this is, this is taboo. This, this is unheard of, right? This is the last thing, right? Cannibalism, right? This, this is one of our, we have several taboos worldwide, and this is one of them, right? But this is only for mammals. Reptiles, not that. Why for mammals? Because we're born helpless. We need a relationship to survive. Even if I can stand, even if I'm a baby deer and I can stand within a couple minutes, I still need the adults around to feed me or to have food be available. And so Hicks lifts this up as one of the foundational ideas of being a metaphysical Christian, is to recognize that we are born into relationships and that these emotional bonds where we have needs and we seek other people out for our needs, not only includes seeking out other humans, but we seek out a sense of trust of the world and of the universe. And for those of us who conceive of a God, we conceive of coming to God, coming to the universe with our sense of need and with the question, am I welcome here? Can I trust the universe to be a place that's friendly to me, or is it going to be hostile and try to eat me? So the I, and it's kind of ironic, uh, so you're going to think I'm crazy, but I've got this Freudian thing, right? What happens in communion? Who eats who? Right? If I'm Roman Catholic and I believe the whole doctrine, what am I eating there? The body, the body, and what am I drinking? The blood. the blood. Is that cannibalism? You bet it is, <laughs> right? What's going? You try to teach somebody from another religion about what's going on there, and I'm eating the body and the blood. Of, it's like no, that's that's like too freaky, right? We've all right. That's a whole another thing. <laughs> but this idea: can we put our trust? in the universe. Can I put my trust in my mother to take care of me? And this becomes the metaphor for all of our relationships. And can I put my trust in the universe? You all probably remember, I, I remember it back during the crack era, um, but also, you know, with fentanyl and opium and heroin. We need people in the NIC units, in the neonatal care units, to come and volunteer to rock the babies, right? And we have rocking chairs there for volunteers to come in and rock the babies. Why do babies need to be rocked? You have to rock them because the baby will die of what's called failure to thrive syndrome, 
right? You can have all the food, all the warmth, you can have a clean baby, but if that baby is not touched enough during the day, the baby is going to give up, right? It's like, it's like kind of a self-suicide thing. It's like the self-suicide programming in the baby. Look, if you're not loved, don't bother. Don't bother staying around, right? It's incredible, right? The sense that we need a warm welcome, the sense that we need to know that someone cares, the sense that we need to know whether the world is trustworthy or not. The second foundational, did I explain that sufficiently, that failure to thrive thing? Okay. The second foundational element in Hick's mind is that Jesus did not say that we should worship him. Jesus was not trying to start a new religion. Uh, he said we should follow him, not worship him, but follow him. We should follow his teachings. We should, and these are Mark's words. I usually don't like the word should, but I'll go along with them here. We should follow his example of love. In Jesus' discovery of the union and the connection with God, he found within himself, he saw that everyone is a brother and sister, and he was unwilling to hate or judge or take up arms or exclude anyone from the table. Now that said, there is one group of people that Jesus wasn't happy with and it's the hypocrites, the folks that claim uh, to be loving but are not. But everybody else, and even them, they, they were welcome. But you know, if you say, well, what about this? Jesus said some pretty, right. The only time he says harsh things, it's about hypocrisy. Butterworth calls Jesus the great example rather than the great exception. When I was first coming here to Unity, that idea blew my mind. And I love that idea, that it's Jesus isn't the only one. In fact, Jesus isn't unique in this way. He just discovered something within himself, and he started showing other people. Hicks sees Jesus as the leader and himself as a follower in the path that Jesus shows. Can I go a little bit longer? Would that be okay? All right, thank you. Uh, this idea that the kingdom of God is within you, that Jesus discovered and teaches, is probably, I think, the most remarkable and far-reaching of all of Jesus' teachings. It's, the, it's been there from the start, right? It's in all the Bibles. The kingdom is within, right? Western Christianity kind of didn't know what to do with it. The Eastern Orthodox branch of Christianity knew what to do with it. They don't have an idea of original sin. And the metaphysical Christians kind of have a sense of what to do with this, which is why we practice going within. We don't need words. We don't have a creed. There's no, there's no confession. There's nothing to confess. You just have to go within and reconnect with that part of you within there. I'm going to skip over some part, um, but my hope is that everyone will have this experience of the transformational thing that happens when you go within and you discover this sense of life, this sense of love within you. I think that's, that's why I keep coming, because coming back reminds me to keep going within, and not every time, but these days, more and more, I would say now every time I go within, I find that I'm loved, even if my brain is telling me, oh, you really messed up that time, Sky. It, was a, it took a while, though. You know, I've been coming here for 20 years, and uh, it was rough the first couple times. But something about the repetition, something about the way you all have been, just the loving nature of the, and accepting nature of this group of people uh, kind of convinced me. Um, it wasn't a conversion, it was more a transformation. 
Now, I'm skipping over all of that because I want to say something about Taylor Swift. <laughs> and I want to say something about the song that Tegan doesn't like, Shake It Off. Because when I was asking her, I heard you all say, shake it off, shake it off, right? But that song is an amazing song. I just want to give you some, some of the, the lines from it. And do we have that, do we have that song queued up here? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chorus. That's the one. Shake it off, shake it off. All right, good. He's good. He's very good. Taylor's words, I never miss a beat, I'm lightning on my feet. Now, on the video, it starts, she's in a, in a, she's in a ballerina tutu line with all these other formally classically trained ballerinas. And they're all standing there like this, and she's like, and she's kind of awkward because she's like, she's not, that's not her thing. It's not who she is. And so uh, the lines, I never miss a beat. I never miss a beat. I'm lightning on my feet. And that's what they, the haters, don't see. They don't see. I'm dancing on my own. I'm dancing on my own. I make the moves up as I go. And all these ballerinas are doing their formal <laughs> plies, and she says, I make the moves up as I go. And that's what they don't know. That's what they don't know, because I am keep cruising. I can't stop. I won't stop grooving. I, like, got this music in my mind saying, it's going to be all right. There it is right there. The gospel according to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I am in the church of Taylor Swift. This is metaphysical Christianity. I got this music in my mind within. She's going within. And what is she doing? She's finding out it's all right. It's going to be all right. Because the players are going to play, 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 play. And the haters, they're going to hate, 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 hate. <laughs> but I'm just going to shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. Heartbreakers are going to break, 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 and the fakers are going to fake, but baby, I'm just going to shake. Shake, 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 shake. Can everybody shake with me? Just shake it off, shake it off, because I keep cruising. I can't stop. I won't stop grooving. It's like I got this music in my mind saying, it's going to be all right. Isn't that what happens when you go within? It's like this, whether it's a voice or this sense of peace comes over and it says what? It's going to be all right. Shake it off. Freeman says, this is God's house. May we who come here not only find out about God, but find God. I looked up Taylor Swift concerts last night. I want to go. If Taylor Swift, yeah, probably that's true. Yeah. If Taylor Swift was uh, James Dillett Friedman, she would have wrote, may we find the music in our minds saying it's going to be all right. Now, that's the end of the video that makes me want to cry. I don't think I can describe this without this happening. Because at the end of the video, Every buddy of every shape and size, not formally trained dancers, are joining her on the stage. And they're all dancing in their own way. And she's wearing the tutu, but she's <laughs> dancing. And they're all dancing as they want to. And I don't know of a better image of the kingdom of God than that. Players are going to play, haters are going to hate, but I'm just going to shake, shake it off. Oscar Wilde's Wilder says, be yourself. Everyone else is taken.
All right, I'm going to skip all that. So uh, as I stand here today sharing with you my second to last lesson as your pastor for the past 20 years, I just want to let you know I'm filled with gratitude. I have loved uh, every moment of this. Uh, I have loved your love of me and uh, my love of you. I appreciate you letting me go so that I can have weekends free with my wife, who has uh, put up with my uh, working on weekends. And uh, as you know, I feel like I owe her so much, but uh, I owe her some day trips and weekend trips uh, at this point in our lives. So I want to thank you for allowing me to be myself. Uh, to explore and express my beliefs openly and for embracing me with love and acceptance. This community has been a place where I could grow and evolve, and for that I'm deeply thankful. And I'm hoping that that's not just true for me, but that that's been true for you as well, that this community is a place where everyone involved can grow and evolve. So let's continue to journey together. Let's embrace the flow of love and transformation, knowing that everything's going to be all right. So thank you for being a part of this uh, chapter in my life and for letting me be a part of this chapter in your life and the life of our amazing Unity Home. Amen. I see Laura coming up. Will the ushers come forward? Thank you, Sky. That was beautiful. And, and yes, I have felt welcome and accepted just the way I am since the minute I walked through here. <clears throat> and you're a big part of that a way shower too. If you'll join me in our offering blessing in your bulletin, divine love moving in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love. I trust God, and I am grateful.
hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself So, what a wonderful world Oh my gosh, Nancy Lynn, that was gorgeous. <laughs> Divine love that is everywhere present. We're grateful today for these gifts of time and talent and treasure. And as we face this time of transition that outwardly is kind of scary, Inwardly, we go in and we transform and embrace that transformation, knowing everything is truly going to be all right. And so it is. Amen. Oh, and if you need a quick, short unity prayer, I'm a little bit laid up, but Janet Prince is filling in for me today, and she will take care of that in the back. Yeah. I might be in need of prayer myself. And I'm going to hand this over to Peggy for our closing circle. All right, please join me as we make a circle. It's been a wonderful service. Do we have any birthdays to celebrate today? No birthdays? No birthdays. No Zoomers? Let's see if there's a Zoomer. Zoomers. Hey, Zoomers, you all have any birthdays? <laughs> okay, well, don't see anybody, so we'll get you next week if we miss you. Let's do the peace song. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get our circle. We got time to straighten up our circle.
surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Keep coming back.